Welcome to another fabulous, fantastic episode of My Orgasmic Life. And I am so excited that not only is today's episode brought to you by Tickle.Life, but I have the CEO of Tickle.Life for a juicy conversation about what her journey's been like um, as a Indian woman um, running a CEO, comp- being the CEO of a sex positive and sex tech company. So I'm going to let her introduce herself, say her name so it's pronounced properly, (laughs) and tell us a little bit about you. Welcome, Shakun. Thanks, Gaia. Uh, So my name is Shakun, Uh, and I'm founder and CEO of Uh, Tickle.life. What's your last name, Shakun? Okay, Shakun Sethi. I, th- I think Sethi is the one which everybody has problem with. So, so I'm comfortable if people just call me Shakun. Um, I've been doing this for one and a half year officially, but unofficially it's been a journey of four to five years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, started in India, then it went to the Netherlands and then back to India and then yeah, now North America. So, and our world. So, so it's been an amazing journey. Um, I'm going to stop you. So let's drop into what is tickle dot life. Let's give it, let's give it some framework for all of our listeners. So the tickle dot life is a discovery platform to discover sex and sexuality and all the Um, so, um, you know, for somebody who really wants to understand what you're trying to do, you're trying to create a community of all the people of the entire ecosystem, which has sexuality, sex related to it, and to bring everything together under a single platform for people who really want to explore and who really want to be a part of the journey called sexuality. That's what Tickle.life is trying to do. And I have to say that, you know, I'm a big supporter because I am one of those contributors, um, you know, and I love you, mm, I love you too. <laughs> and, um, you know, why, like, you're sitting around one day, give me, give us the picture. You're like, life is going, what was life before Tickle Dot Life? What, what, oh. what was your life before that? Before you started that oh. Uh, so my, my previous startup, I was working with governments. I was okay. doing crisis communication. I was doing, working with complete, you know, those office, corporate, B2B, uh, where, where you go all suited, you know, like white collar. So it was a very different journey. And I still remember that a lot of my friends used to tease me because I could never understand anendos. Like if they're trying to, you know, like throw something at me and I'll always be like, what does that mean? Like, you mean sexual yeah. innuendos? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, because I just could not get it. But because I've okay. always, yeah. <laughs> so, so now I want to ask you, okay, so that was what you were professionally doing. What was your personal life look like? Um, were I was seeing someone. You were yeah, seeing I was someone. seeing someone. I was seeing someone and it was going fine. We were happy. Um... But it was just a very um, vanilla relationship, if if that's how I'll put it. It's like vanilla? a very, you know, like yeah, vanilla and a very like a Bollywoodish. Uh, if anybody has ever seen like Hindi movies, a uh, relationship that you know a guy meets a girl, you go out, you know, you don't think about anybody else, you don't even know about uh, there are things like toys, there are things like you know. There's so many sexualities. It's just like, you just know while growing up, you're a woman, mm-hmm. you find a guy, you fall in love with him, and then you'll get married. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. And so you were, you were on that path. And what happens? Um, I Cause think I'm pretty happened- sure on that path, like having a, a sex tech company and a sex positive <laughs> for the world, wasn't really on that like master plan. 
Not at all, not at all. But but I always think that you know what the universe was giving me signals because I remember like seven years back, uh, this author calls me and say and says, "Hey, would you like to co-author a book which is about women and their sexuality?" Mm. And, and my and my answer was like, "What are you even talking about? Why will I do it? Like, I'm sorry. Like, how how did you get this idea that I'll be one of the authors?" So I did say no. Yeah. Because quite honestly, I did not know, and I also did have that taboo attached to it, and it, and the taboo had been with me for a very long time. In fact, even like till last year, when I was super quiet, not talking about it, taking so long to even register the company and to make it official. But I think what happened to me was number one, Starbucks happened. I was sitting on a in the Starbucks waiting for a meeting to start. and there was this person sitting next on the next table he must be like in his late 60s or 70s and he was watching porn on his phone all by ah. himself yeah while he was waiting for you know his family members and all i could see was he was happy well yes <laughs> he was watching porn <laughs> yeah And wow. Like is that normal? Okay, so now I got to ask some like cultural <laughs> difference questions here, right? Being like in Canada, um it would be really frowned upon to watch porn in Sp- Starbucks. Is that like a norm? Is that like a normal thing that happens in India? Like, no, it's not. It's, it's not. It's okay. Not, you know, he was just on his phone and I think he just got this clip and he just was watching it. and then he started watching it again you know like those two minutes clips that people okay. usually send to each other yeah. but but what really got my attention was the happiness you know and like a child like excitement on his face mm-hmm. and then his family came and he just changed into the usual brooding old man mm-hmm. so it just hit me that hmm maybe people who have crossed some age still have desires like Honestly I was at such a nascent stage that I did not know anything about it sex mm-hmm. was not a very important part of anybody's life you don't talk about sex i come from a convent school and we were we were taught about sex by priests you know okay. and 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 it was always like you know this is not good you only do it after you get married so coming from there and never thinking about sex and all of a sudden that you know you're sitting in a starbucks and you see something and it just hits you that something is happening So it just was there in me for a very long time. Then I was lucky enough to go to the Netherlands to after taking a sabbatical and there was a sex toy next to my place where I was staying. Sex toy store. Yeah. Sex okay. toy store. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just making sure that just it wasn't this giant sex toy <laughs> that was in the building next to you. <laughs> Uh, I wish but you know what it's really funny they do have a lot of sculptures that look like sex like, toys you know, <laughs> yeah like, like you're just like randomly walking and then you'll see a sculpture and you'll be like hmm hmm something was happening here like why is it here <laughs> like in the middle of the road like, what's happening um so anyways so it took me 6 months to go inside one the shop hmm. yeah not the sex toy yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and i lied once i went inside so what? so the woman yeah i lied i did not tell them like what i was doing here so the person asked me hey what do you want and i said ah uh, i want something for my aunt who's like 60 plus i think that you know subconsciously i was thinking about that guy the yeah. age but i also did not want to talk about myself because i was ashamed Yeah and now yeah. I feel now I've realized the reason why I was ashamed was because I did not know about stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you do not know you don't want to be judged. Yeah so you lie. And I I think I need to go and say thank you to that woman because her question started the the journey which is tickle dot life. She said what does she like? Mm-hmm. And in my head it was like woman I don't know what I like. How am I supposed to know what my fake aunt likes? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> How? <laughs> and then it went it was funny so 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 I come out and I said yeah sure I I'll, I'll check with her and I'll come back and I know for sure that she also knew that I was just like you know 
just yeah. window shopping. Um, that just started. And I think like, you know, once you just get out, you just do go out. You start yeah. exploring. So I must have gone through 100 shops, sex toy shops all across Europe. <laughs> talking about all my fake relatives that I could find or could think of. So, and I'm pretty sure everybody must be like, you know, there's this strange woman, strange Indian woman who comes over and asks for like strange people, strange relatives. And, and you know, like, like she just asks and when we ask that person, what does she, what do they want? She just leaves. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so then I came back, uh, back to India and I thought that maybe there's something that's happening. I did uh, start this meetup thingy, which used to happen on Valentine's Day for singles. Yeah. So all the single people can come together to my house and we'll throw a party. But the target was very specific. People who I knew get to travel across globally, are yeah. well educated. And you will just at least assume that they would know what they're talking about. And they are, the exposure level would be much higher than the rest of the uh, guys around. Mm-hmm. And none of them were ready to talk about sex toys. They were talking about not being in a relationship. They were talking about not their needs getting met. But they were not ready to go for toys. Mm -hmm. But then, interestingly, I knew that every night I would get a message from at least one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, can you just help me? Where can I find? Where are the resources? What's happening? Here, there, everywhere. So, So, yeah. So, that's the journey uh, started with the MVP, Minimum Viable Product, a very shitty looking website and an app which got rejected twice on Apple. Mm-hmm. But then the day it got launched, we got 5,000 people who were coming who could mm-hmm. anonymously chat with each other. And because we did not anticipate it and I was not from a tech background, it crashed. <laughs> so, Guess it works really well. Okay, yep. It does. It does. Um, Okay, hold on. Before before then, let's see. I'm gonna go over, swing over to Facebook over here, and see, uh, you know, if anybody has any comments. Um, are we still? Are you still being able to hear us? Somebody said that they can't hear us. Oh, um, I no. can hear us. Hold on here. Yeah, no, it the sounds perfect. Uh, you know, I, I suggest uh, you, you know, look at your, your mic issues because um, I can hear it perfectly and other people are being able to hear it. All right. Any questions? Anybody have any questions for Shakun? <laughs> All right. Before we get into like, you know, the, the logistics of like, you know, some of the things that shifted and changed in her world. No. All right. There's a delay, so if you ask a question, and sometimes I get really in, like involved in the conversation, I forget to check in on you guys. It's not because I don't love you. It's just because I'm really excited about what Shagun's talking about. So I promise that periodically I will come in and check in on you guys. And before we sign off, I will make sure that I go through any questions that you might have. All right. And I would love to answer questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So what can we do? Because we have an MVP, which is working fine, even though it looks really bad, but people are sexting. Yeah. And they're like desperately sexting with each other. Like, you know, I want to get laid. Hey, are you available? Am I going to get laid? So it's so funny. Like, you know, you will realize how, um, I don't know, innocent is the right term, but how naive I was that I, half of the time, I did not even realize there was sexting happening. Because they would use those emoticons, you know, like, like and I'm like, oh, nice, you know, people. Oh, they're using- cooking with eggplant. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> and and my colleague, she actually once message messages me like 3 a.m. at night, and she's like, Shakun, there's major sexting happening on the platform. People are not helping each other, and I'm like. But I don't see any sexting. I just see vegetables and fruits. <laughs> and she left like a, a week after. Because I think she realized that, you know, I'm just working with somebody who doesn't get it. Yeah. And she wants to get it into it. And I don't have the patience to. But, you know, all these food blocks. Okay, so um, I have, go ahead. I have somebody ask a question. And let's cut around, um, did your exploration put an end to your relationship? So let's talk about your relationship. Let's come back to your relationship and tickle um, that life in this exploration. So that was the question somebody asked. Nice question. 
well actually not um it was just like you know it had run its course so i would not think that it was because of tickle dot live but on the contrary he was actually pretty impressed that i've found my calling because he could see that you know i was so excited i was i was always i don't want to sound pompous i was always good with my work Mm-hmm. but i was just doing it for the heck of doing it and the reason why i took a sabbatical was because i was done mm-hmm. but i came back with something so i i i think tickle dot life did something amazing for me but now if i look out for relationships now because i'm single is that it's harder because people assume yes let's talk about that so first <laughs> cuz i remember i remember asking you that question when we, you and i first met and i was like so like how is your like dating life and and i rem- i remember you saying well i'm no longer marriageable because of doing this job i am no longer marriageable so can, <laughs> so like let's 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 talk about that from a cultural standpoint cuz i think that is a a really important piece of that so when you said that to me what did that mean that you were um, no longer marriageable because of tickle dot life because of being um, you know, of sex positive yeah because like i said we don't talk about sex and when Culturally? we don't talk about yeah we don't talk about sex and also uh, here when you get married you're just not getting married with a guy or with a person you're getting married to the entire family so it just becomes very difficult even for a guy suppose if he start dating it's just a hypothetical situation to go and tell his parents that hey you know what i am dating a girl and i want to get married to her by the way she's into sex business and by the way there might be dildos at home and by the way you know uh, most of our calls are about you know sex and how can we do this better or how can we do it you know not good so it just makes it difficult mm-hmm. and and especially you know the kind of environment now that we all are in we do not have so much patience Mm-hmm. to be in a relationship to you know uh, to compromise so much so a person would only be able to compromise if there's something that is coming from the other side as well and here i'm not going to you know drop my dream no it's actually no. it has it was not even a dream it's just like i was supposed to do this mm-hmm. you know because, because like i did not think about it so that way it's very difficult like what happens is even if i'm dating someone they just assume um that i would be a very different person than what i am like i'd be very vocal sexually i will you know like just just focus on the sex part and i would not focus on the any other part which is not who i am i'm still the same person i just think it's a carnal need and you can't just keep it aside and people should be able to talk it to mainstream so i think it also confuses a lot of people that what are they getting into you know because like I'm not going to like encourage that each and every message is about my sexuality or about your sexuality. And then there's another phenomena that I've started seeing is a lot of guys now get uncomfortable because they assume I would know more. Yes. Yes. I'm familiar with these problems. <laughs> yeah. I too am familiar with these problems. Yes. Yeah, it just happens everywhere. And and I was honestly very scared to get into it. I just wanted to get into it. I was frustrated because could could not find the resources and could not find the solutions and that frustration led to me creating a company, but I don't think so everybody is that crazy. And it was also while I was creating the company, I was not seeing someone because if maybe if I was seeing someone and maybe, you know, if that person would have said that ah uh, it might hamper our relationship then you never know what would have happened because it's also about you know which phase of life you are in but in india it's about family mm-hmm. and when you're talking about family you're talking about the first question people ask is what do you do mm-hmm. hey i run a sex tech company so what do you <laughs> do you have a cover story this is curious i'm i'm curious do you have like do you have your like okay i've 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 tested out the waters this is a safe environment to tell what i do or do you have like a cover story that you have when you're like oh i really don't want to deal with this <laughs> like um see i've start, I've, i've come out of the closet now uh, yay congratulations <laughs> we're doing an interview I, I, and you know I, I, I would not otherwise yeah. uh, but otherwise uh, 
usually if somebody asks and I do not want, because I'm not a person who likes to confront. Yeah. I like to just work and just give the results. So when I know that somebody is not in a position to understand, to comprehend, um, I only tell them that, you know what, I'm working with mental health, physical health, sexual health. So it's, it's vague. So, so they just, you know, like they and, and I let them decide what do they want to think about it. Yeah. So many a times what I notice is a lot of people start putting it under mental health. Yeah. Great. Because it's also part of it. Yeah. Let's not yeah. correct them. No. But correct the people who are ready to yeah. mature yeah. and to grow. So that's, that's why we call, you know, all our audiences are explorers or they're ready to be, you know, to explore. So how is your family? How did your family handle this? So what's your family like? They surprised me. Completely they surprised me. Because I still remember, um, so I was close to being broke because I had spent so much money mm-hmm. on those MVPs, on you know, everything that I was doing. And then um, in a while, you know, like because I was so desperate to find right people, I did even pay a lot of people you know, to, to tell me about stuff. And they just like vanished because, you know, they must be like, who's the strange Indian woman? You know, who's, why is she messaging us? Like, what's happening? So let's see. But a day before telling it to my parents, I actually did a Google research on what if they disown me? So, so what are the documentation? What are the processes? What do I have to do? So my surname, which is so difficult, would it just go off or would I be able to retain it? Like there were like a lot of questions. So I was all ready. I'm sitting with my parents uh, during high tea. So we have uh, in India, we do follow a lot, you know, like British way of living. Because okay. Britishers were here. So we do have like high tea in the evening. So while we're having a high tea and I'm like, uh, I think I should tell you my new startup because they always know that I've been doing my own thing. And they were like, yeah, what is it? And I told them. And they were quiet for, I think, like 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, my mom just said, I think my friends would need this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but still, she did not say like, maybe, maybe we would need this. <laughs> I think my friend would need this. See, this whole thing of like random relatives it, yeah, it, 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 it family. family it runs in the family <laughs> absolutely <laughs> but yeah they had been very supportive mm. they were like you know what do you need uh so my brother so i have two siblings so my brother in fact is one of the investors he's invested in the seed fund um and my nephew actually did a internship from Bitticle.life for a while. So it's, it's actually, you know, they have completely taken it up. The mm-hmm. only thing that they had was, you know, you still have to realize that a lot of our people would not get it. Mm-hmm. So just don't make a, you know, like big show out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, don't, don't beat your chest and say, you know what, this is what I'm doing and whatever you're doing is wrong, mm-hmm. which, which, is, which you have to like just accept that they're also coming from a place and they should not have to change because of me, yes. because of what yeah. I want to do. So, so yeah, so that's how it is working. And have you, has there been any danger? Have you been um, in, have you felt any danger because of going against the, the norms? Not really. Okay. Um, but it also has to do with what, what Tickle.life is doing. Tickle.life is not, into porn. Tickle no. dot life is not, you know, on your face. Tickle dot life is not, it is not making you change from what you are. It is just telling you that there is something like this, which is a part of your life. So even if you see the design, even if you see the language that we use, even if you see all our collaboration, like with you, you don't come across as somebody who will tell me that Shakun, you're wrong. Or why don't no. you know this? Yeah. You know, on the contrary, would be like, you, and you know that I make mistakes. And, you know, when we discuss and you're like, what you just did was wrong. But that's the thing. I can honestly tell you that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And, that's, and that's the culture that we've started creating. And when you create that culture, I think things work. And it was, it was a big surprise that nobody came to me and said that you're doing something wrong. But on That's the contrary, amazing. It was, yeah. But on the contrary, it was like, oh my God, you're doing something which was needed, 
but maybe we could not do it mm-hmm. so so that's an encouragement and i really think that maybe it was the right time to get into it mm-hmm. and and the approach has to be right mhm yes i love there's there's we have had some very interesting and quite funny conversations <laughs> <laughs> you and i about what what things mean right? <laughs> and you're like what are you talking about and i'm like what are you talking about <laughs> and then i was being like Oh, I was both coming to this realization. Okay, so that's what you're talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, let's make sure we're on the same page and agree that we're on the same page about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because I say that, you know, I always say that who is the target audience for Tickle Dot Live? Shakun is the target audience for Tickle Dot Live because Shakun is learning. Yeah. And yeah. all of you guys are teaching me and I've been blessed, you know, to have right teachers. Mm-hmm. and i i just think that you know all the audiences that are on the platform are blessed because they are getting the right resources and right people to teach them and nobody is telling them that you know they might be like ah so we did not get it but not like ah you don't know this yeah no judgment it's that, it's the yeah. it's it's creating that safe space and this is what I, this is why i decided to come on board cuz usually i don't i usually don't play well with others typically like in a group setting so <laughs> So I, you know, when you approached me, I was like, mm, this is like a, this is like, you, you know, like everybody's like, you know, you got to get along with everybody and everybody's got to play nice together. And there's always politics that go along with, you know, group dynamics and communities and stuff. And one of the things that I really loved and what actually sold me to step in was the fact that you were from this place of non-judgment from this beautiful place of exploration and curiosity like this childlike wonderment <laughs> of curiosity about what sexuality is and how the world has the right to learn what sexuality is from that place of that childlike wonderment and curiosity before all the shame before all the trauma before all society says this is bad or wrong and dirty and all that stuff before all of that stuff and the fact that you were coming at it from that place of creating this safe not judgmental space of invitation not not pressure not expectations not this is what you need to do no telling anybody no finger pointing at anybody it was just like hey here's all the ex- possibilities and i invite you to go find the possibility that works for you and yeah. that is what i so love about you and what you've created and what i love about tickle.life and that's why i support it 100% is because it comes from that place of really creating the safe non-judgmental space for everybody to explore in whatever capacity and whatever level of sexual uh, awareness and education that you're at yeah um you know i i think we've been lucky uh or i have been lucky because this was just an idea we did it it might it would have crashed because there are thousands of ideas and people uh execute but the team that we created and by team i also mean all the collaborators they they just fit in you know mm-hmm. because they all were ready and they were all ready to work together while maintaining that they had their own individuality and the other person being okay with it you know mm. and if you're not okay you're not okay that's you but you do not have to you know like step on somebody else's boundary no so no. yeah so we do make it a point that we are very close but we are also not that close that we start you know like like putting our own misconceptions or you know um whatever like we are coming from wherever we are coming from our backgrounds onto the other person because like like a team is from 21 to 65 uh-huh. you can't expect a 21 year old to you know relate to a 65 year old but then uh-huh. the, you can also see that there are different aspects where they can relate uh-huh. so where they can relate great 
but that does not mean that everybody has to work together because that will not work because what we're trying to do is so vast we're not yeah. talking about a specific gender we're not talking about spe- specific sexuality we're not even talking about a specific target audience we're just not saying that you know people who are this age this age here we're just yeah. talking yeah. about creating that environment and getting anything and everything on board so i was being told that it's going to be very difficult but that's what you that's what you wanted to create you wanted to create this space where here is the hub if you were like okay i want to learn about sexuality well as sexual educators and wellness specialists and yet all of us we're all we're all over the place right and we have very li- and it's very hard necessarily to find us and for you to create almost like a library that's how i that's how i kind of yeah. see tickle dot life is i see this as like the sex library right sexuality library so anything you want to learn anything you want to know about you go to tickle dot life and you have many different experiences many different aspects many different opinions many different views so that you can find the ones that resonate with you there is no right or wrong it's just this exploration and yeah. creating this basically virtual library of resources so you don't have to as the user you don't have to like type this in and then go to that place and type this in and go into that place and then trying to find all of us that have all of these expertise is is hard out in the internet world so you guys took me 2 years to find the right people yeah even answer my basic questions so just imagine how many people would be looking out for those answers mm-hmm. and and we were also clear that you know when you we were talking about you know what is right and wrong i don't think so anybody in this world has the capability to figure out what is right and what is wrong no we might say that we know but nobody has that capability um so if somebody does not so let it let let us keep it open for people to decide what is right for them Yes. it is about them because if you do yeah. not take care of yourself then you can't take care of somebody else so even if if i as a parent am coming onto the platform to look out for uh, resources for my child who's coming out in a way it's still for my you know for me mm-hmm. to figure out what is right and what is wrong because i want to be a good parent as well so it it's about you know you and that was what i was very particular that we should be able to create and we should that's why I maintain that everybody has an individuality and we can't play with it and you've done a very good job of that so that was your vision and that's what is you have created oh uh, we still have a long way oh uh, yeah there's lots of you know <laughs> there's always work to be done but I, you know i think it's it's you know i want to take a moment to just send give you a woo, woo. Way to go, Shkun! <laughs> oh, I still remember. Like, if you remember, like you know, when we started talking about it, it was something else, and it just developed. And you know, that's actually the fascination with working with communities. They direct you without even saying a word. Mm-hmm. You know how they're going, what are their problems, what is happening. It just gives you the solution. So, like initially, we used to ask, "What do you want?" but what we realized was that the major problem with the entire industry is everybody knows what is going wrong but nobody knows what they want because if they would it we would still not be in this problem like still a person like shakun would not take 2 years to find the resources mm-hmm. you know so so we were very clear that you know just keep on evaluating what is happening to the ecosystem and let's start developing on growing accordingly so whenever you hear any new announcement anything new like like we just launched the shop the reason was not to become an e-commerce site but the reason was that we realized that a lot of people who are coming have reached a stage when they want to consume now yeah after yeah. exploration but then again the entire frustration cycle again starts that okay now there are thousand more places and they're using such complicated terms where am i going to find the answer yeah. even some something simple like which is my first sex toy yeah i don't know because the language is like phew, i don't get it even from the um industry point of view the same thing happens you know 
the ultimate goal for you or for everyone is to be good at what you're doing rather than being good at everything that you're doing, which is not possible. So let somebody else do that for you. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. So same that's how this same with sex. Absolutely. <laughs> It's sexuality and exploration and and pleasure and and relationships and like there's so many like human sexuality is so complicated and there's so many levels to it and you can see it in you know the content that's created and give you know on tipple dot life and you can see the diversity possibilities that you never even thought was possible. So I have a I have a question for you. What is the most shocking thing you have learned on this journey around Um, sex specifically, I I want to get a little, I'm, you know, I want to get a little juicy for a second here. (laughs) uh, I think all, you know, those different kinks that I have been reading about and people have been talking about that has been like a very big, like really like I I heard like day before yesterday that there's a kink with balloons. Yes. I'm like, Yeah, and I'm like balloons. And you know, so so how I function is, if I need to understand something, I have to visualize. So since day before, I've just been trying to visualize how are the balloons? Are they like inflated? Are they like you know what's happening with the balloon? And what are people doing with the balloon? You know, so it's like a fantasy land for me. Uh And and I was like, you know what? First, I'm going to visualize, and only then I'm going to go and search for them. Yes. (laughs) Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> at least I'll have some, you know, like some, some fun fantasy for me. So it's just like a, you know, I'm in an amusement park. Mm-hmm. And there's so many things happening. And I'm always like a kid whose who's, who's eyes are open, who's like, <gasps> seriously? <laughs> wow. So there hasn't been like one thing as such. There have been like at least one thing per week. Oh, nice. Nice. You know? Yeah. And, and it's, it's just fascinating because I get to talk to so many people, even though I'm staying at, in Delhi, uh, India right now, and, and the market has now become more global. But it's just like you meet different kinds of people. You meet, you know, they have different types of interests. They have different, you know, kings. Uh, but ultimately, it just boils down to one simple fact that they want to be happy. Uh They want to be intimate in the right way. Uh They want to take care of themselves. Uh You know, and that's, that's amazing. You know, cultures, because I have been an international um, communication culture student, because that's what I started my major. But I can actually see it that we are taught that everybody acts in a different manner. Uh But what I've realized after Tickle Dot Life is everybody might act, they might have different um, gender, sexuality, interest, whatever you call them, but ultimately they all are same. Mm-hmm. And they just want three, three things. They want to be in a place which, is, which has got no judgment. Mm-hmm. They want to be a place which, where they feel safe. Mm-hmm. They just want a place where they know that they can say anything. And nobody's going to tell them. No finger wagging going on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some, some people like that. But, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking okay. about. That's consensual judgment. <laughs> that's a different that's true. show. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You know, I'm actually so fascinated by people like you that, you, you inspire me. Like, Aww. how are we doing this? It's such a difficult industry to be in. And day in and day night, day out, you are helping people. You're making people uh, realize or, you know, actualize their own selves. It must be amazing, you know. And, and I just think that, you know, you all are closer to what people might call God, mm. but not exactly God. It's just like, you, know, you just see that light and I can see that light, you know, that's, it's amazing how it's working and how, 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 how this industry is evolving and they're, they've been working for so long. Well, I think for me, it's interesting that 
like, you know, like my audience knows I didn't choose this job. This job was chosen for me. You know, it was kind of like the universe was like, Hey, this is your calling. And I'm like, Hey, I don't want this calling. <laughs> and the universe is like, too bad. <laughs> You know, and, you know, resistance is futile, right? So I learned that just lean in, surrender, let go, and show up who I am. And, and for me, I think the, the key of what I do is healing myself and self-acceptance, right? So the core of before I can help the world come to this place of self-acceptance and self-love because ultimately that's what sexuality is it's just a part of our self-acceptance and self-love before i can help the world come to that place and hold space i have to come to that within myself and so every day that's a that's a child that's that's my own personal challenge that i put forth for myself every day is that how can i truly look in the mirror and love all of who I am, the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole experience of the human experience. Like how can I just drop into this place and be who I am, my authentic self. And so as I go on that journey on a daily basis, it allows me to show up in the world for others to help facilitate that for them, to help them come to this place of self-acceptance and self-love and basically be your authentic self. And some of that is about orgasm and pleasure and sexuality. And some of it is that I'm just okay with the fact that I like to wear, you know, a tutu while frolicking in the rain. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's your truth and being able yeah. to stand in your truth. So that's imagine what I- the world, Imagine the world would be amazing, you know, like such a different place if people were just true to who, who they are. What do they want? Yeah, yeah. exactly. That yeah. question, like that question, all those sex, sex shop, sex toy shop owners and, you know, workers were like, so what do they want? It's that same question. Who are we and what do we want that brings us the best, that lights us up, that brings us the best version of who we are? You know, whatever that is, it doesn't matter what it is. Absolutely. Like, like, you know, uh, working with Tickle.Live, it has changed me so much because I always used to think that, okay, so I don't shout. Okay, so I, uh, you know, I, I am aggressive when my work is concerned, but I'm still not that aggressive. You know, I'm ambitious, but I don't come across as ambition, you know, like how people project women to be, you know. And I always used to question, is there something wrong with me? Do I need to work on myself? Why am I not like the other woman? Why am I not like the other person? But working here, it just makes me, made me realize that this is who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be somebody I'm not. No. And you're just, you're, you're just more happy. You're more confident. You're just, you're just in yourself. So if I want to talk about sex, I can talk about sex. If I do not want to talk about sex, I do not talk about sex. I'm not doing it because somebody else wants me to do it. And this, interestingly, has also helped me with better relationships. You know, mm -hmm. because, because they realize what's happening. I'm closer to my friends, to my family. Um, don't have a boyfriend right now, but whatever. It's just like, you're just confident what you're looking out for. You just become that because you just accept that this is who you are. Mm -hmm. so, so it has been an amazing journey. And I, I, I would really, really like or encourage people just to see who they are. That's it. And, you know, and I lovingly invite everybody who is listening. If you haven't been to Tickle Dot Life, uh, that would be a great start of to figuring out who are you? What do you like? What is available? You don't know what you don't know until you don't know, until you realize you didn't know it. You have no idea. <laughs> um, you know, I lovingly invite you to go on this explore, exploratory journey of like, if something is like, if I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, if you start to read something or come across something and you're like, whoa, that's not okay. Like your, your, your body language, everything about you is like, whoa, abort mission. But it's not okay for you. That I also though say that 
see, this is the thing around sexuality that is so different than in many other things. What our true desires, our sexual desires are, usually are not in line with what our thought process is. So our thoughts are like, this is the containment of what is safe for sex, right? So it has to look like this. It has to be like this. It has to happen on a Tuesday. It has to happen in, in this comp- compart- compartment a lot. At night. At night. It has to be with the lights off. Like what, all these things. Like we've been taught, this is our sexual belief system that we've been taught culturally, societally, our friends, our peers, all these things. But that's not what actually excites our genitals. Right? What truly excites us, <laughs> like deep down, is all the things that are not inside that box. So when I like lovingly invite everybody to go on this, when you're dropping into the exploration piece of discovery of who you are, who you really are, what are your real desires? Not what you've been told, not what you've been taught, but who you really are. That when you're a little uncomfortable, read it anyways and check in with your genitals. What are they doing? They actually tell you the truth of things, not your brain. Interesting. I like this. <laughs> so what's one thing that you want to leave our audience with, Shakun? Um, something that I've been talking about. Um, it's okay if you think you're not same or similar to other person. It's okay if you have your own needs. It's okay to to question yourself. It's okay to question other people as long as you remember that the other person is also going through the same thing or might be going through the same thing. So it's about your journey, take care of your journey and then others, people and their journey will take care of themselves. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. All right. So thank you for being on the show. I just, just give me a second check in over with our people. Hey peeps or listen to us live. Yeah. Anybody have any questions before I send Shakun off into the world to make the world a sexier place for us all (laughs) and all the back end support she does to make that reality happen. (laughs) No. Okay. So to spend more time, go visit Tickle.life. Um, you know, we will have all the details, all the links, all, you know, there's always freebies going on. There's so much stuff always happening over at Tickle.life. So, you know, it's an important place to, you know, bookmark in your world so that you can visit on a regular basis. Um, you know, don't forget to follow me. <laughs> you can find you can find me uh, at all the social media platforms under Gaia Morissette and Empress Gaia. For all of your sexual, well- sexual wellness needs, visit me at succulentliving.com. For all your BDSM needs, visit me at empressgaia.com. And I have tons of you know, online programs and courses and trainings. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on. And I also host Tickle.Life's podcast. So if you want to find out about Shakun's very first kiss, which I'm going to be interviewing with her soon about, <laughs> and all of our other experts who lean in with me um, on Tickle.Life podcast, then go check it out. And you can be, that can be found on all the podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple, Google, and don't forget to, uh, you know, listen to My Orgasmic Life because it's awesome. Till next time. That's it. That's all. Mwah. Love you. Bye.